Okay, so uh, uh, shall we start it? A microphone. So actually, that uh, um, until the midterm or until this lecture, the uh, the I apologize, you know, putting a lot of pressure for equations and so on. The uh, that uh, is a uh, kind of important part, uh, but at the same time, I know that this is, you know, a little bit complicated. But uh, from now on, from today uh, the, to the rest of that lecture, it's more for the uh, the, uh, the play with the neural network engineering. So we still have some math, but the, the portion of the math is quite smaller. Uh, so I just want to uh, they, they mention it. Uh, and the uh today the uh uh i will discuss about the search uh which we actually explained a little bit in the uh vitarbi algorithms but this vitarbi algorithm search was actually not the real search that we are usually conduct for speech recognition and this one is quite more uh, the, the difficult part. Uh, and I will try to explain about the search uh, the, in an intuitive manner. And uh, again, the, this is a simple part uh, of the uh, explanation. The real search happened in ASR is more complicated. Uh, and the... Um, Usually, the, it's nowadays that the speech recognition becomes very simple, but it used to be very complicated, like a phoneme structure, uh, the context dependency, context dependency with uh, some clustering, uh, hidden Markov model, lexicon, uh, the, and, the, and the complicated engram. So uh, the, this search part used to be very complicated, uh, but uh, uh, the today's part is a little bit simplified version. It's actually end-to-end -end method that simplifies the search part as well. And the, then uh, the, if I have more time, I will also explain about the uh, representation of the, uh, the uh, hypothesis uh, in speech recognition, which is very uh, important in many applications. So I will explain about uh, the, the NBEST tree lattice. And the last one, again, if I have uh, time, I will also explain about the system combination. Uh, this is also quite often used in speech recognition. And then today we will release the coding assignment. Okay, so uh, the today's actually part uh, is either HMM or the end-to-end, -end, especially CTC uh, or uh, the attention-based uh, the, the approaches. Uh, we explained about the, uh, I explained about the almost all component, feature extraction, acoustic model, lexicon, language modeling part, right? And the same for the end-to-end -end part, uh, the CTC and so on. I still don't fully really explain about the, the neural network architecture and so on, but some kind of a high level concept, I already explained about it. And what I or the, the mostly try to explain about you is Actually, how to uh, derive this PW given law, and then that uh, we use you know this uh, decomposed form, or we use the CTC or attention and so on. But I, this is actually not the end of the speech recognition. As you see from this equation, we have another important component. Uh, this is this argmax part. This part uh, is actually not very not easy, or I say it is one of the most difficult part. Uh, and this is a today's topic. Okay, so uh, let's uh, the first uh, the, uh, uh, the try to understand uh, this uh, the argmax part. Uh, let's say this is a token sequence, and uh, this is the, the, the uh, possibly uh, the all possible uh, the token sequences. And then uh, the, if, for example, we have a vocabulary size and having uh, uh, the lengths of uh, J and so on, actually this 
such space uh, becomes super huge. Uh, just like a, this is, by the way, very small cases. Only 5,000 vocabulary. Our usual conversation, we use the, uh, the uh, 20 to uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the 100, depending on the, uh, the, our definition, using the word or using the, uh, the uh, sub-word. But 5,000 is actually smaller side. And then the length is 20. This is actually a little bit longer sentence. But then the uh, this number uh, becomes uh, the too large uh, to uh, consider uh, the all possible sequence uh, during the search. So search is all the similar to the uh, the our kind of issue in the summation of the sequence. We always have to consider this kind of uh, the quite large number of other uh, the hypotheses, and then try to find the best one. And the uh, this is one example uh, that used in the lecture uh, often. Let's say the, uh, the length is three, uh, the token length is three, and then vocabulary is only three. And then uh, the, uh, I will move to the short quiz. Can you open it? I think the question is how many? sequences, how many hypotheses for this particular case do we have to consider? Uh, and then uh, let's talk about the greedy search, which we already, uh, uh, maybe I should we say the answer because everyone's correct, so I don't have to say, right? 27, right? <laughs> yeah. Three times three times three, right? Just expanding. Uh, and as you see, this is very redundant. Uh, so uh, that we could actually try to kind of find the, uh, the, the better way, uh, the better strategy to uh, the, uh, the, uh, prune the hypothesis. And one of the, uh, the hypotheses is the greedy search, which I already uh, uh, introduced in the Vitavi algorithm. But anyway, you know, uh, we just you know uh, the, find out the the the, uh, the locally uh, the best passes, and then uh, the continue to do that. Uh, so this is actually at uh, a very sh shallow computational cost. Uh, it is uh, the the, uh, the the way to avoid the other. Uh, uh, it is a way to avoid the the. Um, the computational, large computational cost. But as you see, uh, once we have an error in the kind of uh, early stage, uh, we cannot uh, recover the error uh, from this. So uh, this uh, the greedy search is actually uh, the most simple, but the most error prone uh, method. By the way, in the CTC, actually the uh, greedy search is often used uh, because uh, it doesn't have uh, the, any uh, the token dependency explicitly. So it's actually a reasonable assumption to, to perform the, uh, the, the, the greedy decoding uh, in CTC uh, if we don't have our, uh, the, the, any kind of language model and so on. Also, the model is uh, getting powerful, and then the greedy search is actually not very bad. So this is also the one in, important uh, the, the note. However, it, uh, if we consider the RN transducer or attention-based ASR, or once we try to consider the language model and so on, we actually have to consider the token dependency. And then we actually have to uh, consider the entire history. So in this case, uh, the, we couldn't consider this beam search, a greedy search is valid. Uh, and we have to consider uh, other uh, types of the search. And then uh, that we introduce a beam search, uh, which is to limit the number of other uh, hypotheses for every other, uh, for every time frame. Uh, for example, I use the N uh, for the other uh, number of beam. And in the, uh, in the, uh, the uh, previous example, uh, if we using the beam search in the every time, 
uh, for example, if n equal two, we always try to keep the two best hypotheses. First part is actually easy. Uh, from among three, we just getting the two, okay? But second part is actually not very easy. Each of the hypotheses would have a kind of a different kind of other node, right? So we first actually expand this one, expand in this side as well. And then at a, uh, among actually this other six pattern, we can get the two. So originally it was the, originally in the first step only the three to get the two. But if we expand the next time frame, and then it becomes actually a bit larger uh, due to the kind of expansion and the considering the, the, the list of the hypothesis. But uh, after that, uh, that, we actually performing this kind of process uh, the, the, uh, the, the recursively, and then uh, getting the, uh, the, the uh, two uh, the possibly uh, the best uh, the, the, uh, beam search result. Uh, and then from this final two result, uh, uh, we can check the score and then getting the one uh, the best one. So this is actually the beam search uh, the algorithm. And this is also a way to kind of uh, the escape the heavy computation. And the uh, compared with greedy search, this actually becomes a li little bit more computational cost uh, the, uh, because of the, the uh, various actually the, the, the hypothesis uh, that we have to consider. But still, uh, it's not like a, uh, the, the exponential. So by doing that, the, the beam search is actually uh, the quite uh, the reasonable. Okay, so this is a kind of a, a, the, um, the comparison of the beam search uh, and the greedy uh, the decoding. And as you see that the beam search are uh, keeping the hypothesis more and then possibly have a more uh, the, 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 the accurate result. And of course, if beam we call one, it's other uh, goes to a greedy recording. And if beam becomes the other uh, the, uh, the infinite, and then uh, the, or vocabulary size, and then it becomes the, uh, the, the, uh, the consider the full search. So that we should be careful about uh, not to add a, a beam to uh, make the beam to be very large. But the beam search is also not the perfect again. Uh, the, so uh, the, the um, but uh, uh, there are several other methods like a sampling and so on. But for speech recognition, uh, beam search is the most uh, the widely used uh, the, the approach. And I just kind of uh, writing the um, the beam search. Uh, the algorithm with some equations. So again, the, the first part, uh, we have a, a, the, a n hypothesis. Uh, sorry, not the n, uh, the vocabulary size, which I defined as the, I think I didn't de define, yeah, the, just kind of a, uh, the, the, Vocab let's say vocabulary size. I didn't uh, the, set it as a, 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 the uh, variable. So first part is that uh, among the uh, vocabulary size, we sort it and then uh, getting the uh, two best or uh, n best hypothesis. And the next one is actually given this kind of a two, each of the kind of are uh, the a uh, node, we expand the hypothesis. So it becomes actually two times vocabulary size as a space. And then uh, the, we actually sorting it, and then we get the kind of best, uh, the two best other uh, example. And then continue this kind of approaches. So important operation is keeping the hypothesis and getting the score for the, the among all hypotheses, and then sorting to get the top n. So this uh, the, the operation is uh, the important uh, for the beam search. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the main equations uh, is, as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, the, uh, preparing the hypothesis, 
getting the score for each hypothesis and sort up to one to n. And the sort is kind of, a, uh, the, I believe you guys understand it. And the score, uh, what would this, uh, kind of score uh, we would use? And then uh, we use the uh, PW given goal that can be computed by the uh, the HMM, uh, the, the, the lexicon, and the uh, n-gram, uh, uh, or uh, the CTC, or RN transistor, or uh, attention-based uh, approach. And then uh, the, the, uh, based on this score, uh, that we can uh, actually get the, uh, the, uh, the, the best the hypothesis and so on. By the way, this score part is actually generally uh, the often extended. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, the score uh, would be actually uh, the combined by the language model score obtained from the external uh, the, the, uh, the models. Uh, or we can even combine the two algorithms like our attention, uh, the CTC and so on, or attention or RN transducer and so on. Or we also have some kind of a, uh, the heuristic penalty. Uh, if we want to make the kind of a, uh, the, the, uh, the hypothesis to be shorter, then the, we actually are making a penalty not to make the kind of a score uh, that to be uh, the uh, the longer uh, by just the, the adding the uh, minus length or something like that in the score. Uh, so this uh, the huge on part in the beam search is quite often happened. Uh, so this is also just a one node, uh, but that is a kind of quite a common way to actually choosing the various kind of information source. And then in these cases, in the fusion cases, uh, we also often uh, the, uh, the combine, when we combine, we also have to kind of uh, care about the, uh, the uh, weight and so on, like whether we should kind of more rely on the, uh, the speech recognition score, or whether we should score uh, the, the rely more on the language model score and so on. That can be also generally balanced. Okay, so this is a kind of uh, the beam search that I explained. However, I didn't uh, explain about the, the, the important part of beam search, that, uh, the, which is, I, for example, I mentioned here that J equals three or J equals 20, the uh, kind of fix the length of the token. However, it is true. No, right? Given the speech, we don't know how many lengths of the token, how many words we actually uttered. So this is actually one part of the search. So in addition to this search, we actually have to consider when this kind of graph expansion would be stopped. So actually, in, uh, including this part, uh, uh, the search space again becomes very huge. And then uh, the, uh, there are a uh, the, uh, the lot of kind of ways to uh, the, the, uh, getting the, uh, the end of the, uh, the uh, position in the search. But uh, one approach to stop the search is to actually including the end of sentence symbol as a part of our kind of our prediction. So, for example, one of uh, the, this kind of uh, token, like A, B, C, sorry, it can be smaller, but uh, it, it is A, B, C, A, B, C, and so on. But let's say B is end of sentence. And uh, this is uh, the, the model actually predicting this one. And then we can actually uh, consider the stop uh, of the, uh, the, the uh, hypothesis and so on. So some of the cases, for example, if uh, B is the end of sentence, okay? And in these cases, this one is B here. Apologize, it is too small. But I uh, uh, could uh, guess that it's ABC, 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 ABC. 
Okay, <laughs> so second part is always B. So this part is the end of the sentence. Um, not a good way. So I will try to kind of make it larger. Not the but, I guess. Now, <laughs> ABC is a bit visible, right? And if B is the end of the sentence token, and then this sentence is stopped here. And then uh, this case is actually this sentence is stopped here, so we don't have to actually expand this one. And in this case is this sentence is stopped. So uh, the, the, in this kind of uh, the, uh, the step, but uh, other token like uh, AAA, AAC, ACA, ACC, until they actually predicting the B, it actually <laughs> continue to grow. So we still need to actually uh, the, uh, the set some kind of maximum uh, the lengths that we want to kind of search them. And then uh, the, the, we continue this beam search and they are uh, the actually stuck the uh, hypothesis that reaches to the B. And then keeping it in the, 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 the our kind of a stack. And uh, until we kind of reaching to some kind of a, a threshold, let's say uh, that we keep to uh, the work on this kind of expansion until 10. And then we kind of checking the kind of a, uh, the, the stack that are the reaching to the end of a sentence. And then at the final sorting, and then getting the, the best one. So this is actually the, the more exact way of how to also including the, uh, the, uh, the, the way to kind of uh, the, the search the length uh, in the beam search. Yeah, it's the set of kind of limit to 10 and so on. So in this case is the finite, but uh, uh, the, the, it's possibly, it can be actually growing to the, the infinite, yes. But uh, the, uh, and uh, it, that solution uh, might uh, exist, uh, but uh, as a kind of beam search, uh, actually having a lot of heuristics, <laughs> including this beam width and the maximum length and so on, is also another other one, which is, you know, to set a kind of a reasonable length. Usually we set this kind of a, a, a maximum length uh, uh, proportional to the input length. So this kind of maximum legacy is actually reasonable, but by setting this one and then uh, the uh, the among this kind of uh, the, the expansion uh, that we usually uh, the, the get a kind of a list of the uh, the, the sentences that goes to the end of sentence. Yeah. Um. Again, beam search has a lot of heuristics. It's a very good question. So actually, uh, the uh, yeah, I can expand your uh, question. Uh, even my explanation actually didn't explain anything about the input, right? Input rings. I only mentioned about the output rings, right? Uh, that uh, that uh, is actually called the uh, output synchronous uh, beam search. And this output synchronous beam search is what I explained. It's uh, the, the very intuitive because uh, the, the, this is, you know, output is one to J, J token, and then we expand it to the kind of uh, the each of the token and so on. However, uh, our speech also has another time, right? Which is input time. And this is very different. <laughs> so actually, uh, the output synchronous beam search is only uh, the often used for the attention-based uh, the SR, which actually uh, the, by using the, uh, the soft attention to uh, the consider all possible uh, the, uh, the, 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 the information in the time as a weighted sum. As a result, model actually doesn't have our information uh, about the time uh, input timestamp. And then uh, the, the people are using output synchronous beam search, which I explained here. And actually this is also, again, 
uh, attention based encoder decoder has uh, the, this kind of form, and then just chain rule to uh, decompose it. And then uh, the, the, uh, the, the, there is no kind of uh, the, uh, the explicit time information because it is uh, the, 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 uh, the cross attention uh, the, across the time to uh, the marginalize this information. So in this case, uh, the output, output synchronous beam search is fine. However, we also have a lot of uh, the example in the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, for the, uh, the HMM uh, CTC and the uh, RN transfer size is actually similar to CTC uh, the, in some kind of a form. So I actually want to explain uh, this part uh, uh, with the, uh, the CTC, HMM, and the RN transducer. Actually, they are uh, using the input synchronous uh, beam search. And then uh, the, uh, the, in this case, uh, input time frame is more important uh, to do the beam search uh, than the, uh, the output synchronous beam search. And then uh, the one important difference uh, would be that uh, in the input synchronous beam search, uh, if we reaching to the end of the time, and then we actually can stop the, uh, the uh, beam search. So there is no kind of an issue uh, for the, uh, the end point problem uh, and so on. But uh, the, the, let's uh, the discuss about uh, the input synchronous beam search a bit more. So first, uh, the, the this is a kind of a recap uh, review uh, of our kind of uh, the problem. So CTC or HMM or RN transducer. RN transducer is a little bit different. <laughs> so maybe I can uh, discuss about CTC and this uh, uh, the can be also applied to HMM. But uh, uh, we usually have uh, the token sequence W, which uh, that we have discussed on, on the output synchronous beam search. But we also have an additional uh, the, the, uh, the variable, which is the alignment of the sequence, right? And there are two differences. I, sh I should make it as a, as a question. <laughs> it's a, uh, the, I, I hope you guys can already understand it, but uh, it's already written. So uh, one difference is, of course, length, right? Output and the input is uh, the always different. Unfortunately, that is a problem uh, in speech recognition and it makes it very difficult. And another difference is that uh, uh, in the CTC cases, in addition to the original uh, token vocabulary, we also have our other uh, blank symbol, right? And in the HMM cases, it's, it's, this one becomes phoneme and this one becomes the phoneme and the internal HMM state as the augmented vocabulary and so on. Anyway, vocabulary size is different by considering the duration and the length is different. And then uh, the how to kind of uh, the change the previous label synchronous uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, hypothesis expansion to the times uh, the input synchronous. We actually are using the Z as a kind of expansion unit. So this one, Apologize again, which can be too small for the people who <laughs> sit down in the, uh, the back part. Uh, but the left side is the uh, label synchronous and uh, uh, the uh, output synchronous, and the uh, right side is input synchronous. By the way, I sometimes also call uh, the output synchronous beam such as the label synchronous beam such. And sometimes I call input synchronous beam such other frame synchronous beam such. Apologize that this <laughs> is a more like a, a, the, a, the, the terminology uh, that the, the generally people using in the, the speech recognition. But anyway, the, try to be careful about the terminology. So left side is output synchronous and the right side is uh, the, uh, the, the input synchronous. And then uh, the, this part, uh, uh, the, I also have uh, uh, the, this, uh, the output synchronous, we have a uh, three vocabulary, A, B, C. And the, in the, uh, the input synchronous cases, I just kind of omit C, you know, since it is too many, if we have a four. 
So instead, we have A, B, and blank. So the vocabulary size is, is also different. Uh, in left side, three, and the right side, uh, the, the, uh, the A, B, and exclude C. But anyway, first expansion is uh, the having uh, uh, the, the, the blank. And the, let's go uh, the expand this one. Uh, basically same, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, or A, B, blank, A, B, blank, A, B, blank. And then uh, the, the, taking the third step, it becomes also more uh, the expansion, A, B, blank, A, B, blank, A, B, blank, and so on. So it's actually uh, the almost same as the, uh, the output synchronous beam search if we're using the hard alignment, right? But there is some difference. And uh, that I actually want you guys to uh, enjoy the by writing. This is not the by, by the way, test. Uh, can you have the other? Yeah. Um, this, this is not by the way, test. Uh, just to you know, uh, the, so like the example in the uh, light top corner, for each pass, uh, please uh, the fill out uh, the uh, hard alignment uh, token and the uh, uh, corresponding uh, other token, a uh, hard alignment sequence and the corresponding token sequence. Uh, this is not uh, the test one. This is not uh, the even a uh, participation point. Uh, yeah. uh, And uh, this is an example in the uh, right top corner, right? So just, you know, uh, using this uh, as an example and uh, try to kind of uh, figure out all other part. Okay, maybe uh, uh, some people may finish or some people may in the middle, uh, but uh, uh, the, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> some you know, the quiz of you know uh, the the, uh, the using the brain to you know combat the uh, the many of the patterns of the uh, the CTC alignment to the uh, uh, actual token, and then please uh, the check the token sequence, and then uh, the compared with the uh, previous output uh, the synchronous beam search, uh, what is the difference? The, I would say that the alignment part is not different, right? It's just an expanding, uh, the, uh, the, and it becomes, you know, uh, to, uh, the 27 uh, patterns uh, of the sequence. But the after this other uh, is converged to the token sequence, it is definitely the difference, right? Which, what would be the difference there? Yes, there are a lot of duplication, actually, right? Any other difference? Yes, Le length is very different, right? Even the last case is length is zero. <laughs> so uh, the uh, alignment uh, uh, pattern uh, is uh, the, the has such kind of variations, and which we have to consider uh, during the beam search. What I mean to say, ah, uh, yeah. So the uh, there are a lot of. Uh, uh, lot of actually uh, duplicated passes that's uh, corresponding to the same token, right? So we actually have to consider it. And in this case, how to do that? We just adding them. Uh, so that the, until this uh, the, the time, the, the probability of, for example, in this case, uh, the, uh, the just emitting the A would be the represented as this kind of six pattern. So we just summing all of them. And then uh, this actual computation is very similar to the forward uh, computation in CTC uh, that we actually uh, that, uh, learned in the previous lecture 
uh, and so on. So I sometimes use the, the continue to use this uh, the notation, but it is actually uh, more exactly it is a little bit different uh, because uh, the this uh, the the CTC uh, the uh, the forward part uh, was actually the uh, the until large t, and we also have a fixed w right, but in this case, depending on the beam thirty result, uh, this uh, w also can be changed. Uh, but I will anyway uh, using this notation uh, for this other uh, problem and so on. Okay, so and then uh, now uh, the, we can get the score for each time frame. So the difference is that again each time frame, not in the output now, but for each time frame, uh, we can actually uh, get the lot of other uh, sub sequence. Like this. So even the length is actually different. And then uh, we get to the kind of a top end, and then uh, the, the performing the beam search. So this is a little bit tricky, uh, but this is actually one way to uh, solve the, type, uh, the input synchronous beam search. But there are a lot of variants of the input synchronous beam search. For example, some people actually thinking that this is not great because the length is different, right? Comparing the kind of uh, the, the hypothesis, which has a different uh, length of the token, is not very accurate. So uh, some people actually uh, further having uh, applying the heuristics to solve this issue and so on. But the general basic beam search is like this. Okay. Uh, that's actually the mostly for the beam search uh, part. And then the, I will give you some of the, uh, the tips uh, for uh, the CTC uh, beam search, because that would be uh, the one of the, uh, the, the coding assignment, uh, the, uh, the, the question. So first part is that uh, I mentioned that this is a kind of important score. So we just kind of you know, adding everything. And then even keep uh, the maintaining this kind of score uh, for each hypothesis is important. However, actually uh, it is not enough. We usually actually keeping the scores, uh, uh, the keeping the kind of uh, two scores. One is ending at the blank and the other is others. So uh, the, for example, in the case that the, 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 we are the reaching to emit the A token, uh, blue one is uh, the finished without blank. And the red one is finished uh, with the blank. And as a kind of a computation, it's better to keep to separately uh, the keeping this kind of score because if we go to the T plus one next time, as you may remember, whether this previous token is be, uh, the, uh, the, the blank or not, uh, we can actually uh, the, the, uh, the change the kind of uh, the, the, uh, to see uh, next token is repeated token or not. So uh, after, again, you know, after we finish this part uh, and then Next token is A. And then uh, if, although these kind of six uh, same token to emit A, but if this is ended with a blank symbol, and then next we come A, it becomes AA, repeated token, right? And uh, if uh, not, it becomes A. Actually, it's changing depending on the previous. Uh, the, uh, the uh, result of the token. So to deal with this kind of a relationship, uh, it's better to keep the hypothesis of both, uh, the, uh, if, uh, the better to keep the score of both uh, the non-blank and blank uh, the score in the memory. So this is actually one of the important tips uh, when we actually uh, the, do the beam search in CTC. Is that clear? It's a little bit complicated. 
<laughs> but I hope intuitively you understand it. And uh, after that, the, in the algorithm, you could uh, further understand this other part. But at least, you know, uh, the, the, I think you guys now see that, oh, yes, the CTC, uh, the, depending on the blank uh, or not, repeated token behavior can be changed. So that's actually the, the, the important part. And then this is the treatment to deal with it. And the next uh, the, uh, the tips uh, is that uh, the, what uh, the, the, the we have discussed. So now we don't have to care about the end of sentence. So we just kind of uh, uh, the, the performing the beam search until uh, the uh, the end of the, uh, the the speech frame, and then uh, the beam search is gone. So uh, we do not have to uh, the think about the uh, uh, the setting some kind of a threshold or other uh, 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 complicated uh, algorithm to comp uh, the perform the uh, the uh, the end of sentence uh, the, the approaches uh, and so on. And we can also, by the way, uh, the adding the score, uh, the when uh, the language model score, uh, in the case that the, uh, the token uh, is uh, the, the, uh, the pretty kind of uh, the, uh, the given. Uh, uh, so in this case, is, for example, A, A, B, uh, the, the B, A, each case, is, we can actually compute the language model score as well, right? And then we actually can adding them. Uh, the, when uh, the, we performing the beam search. Okay, so that's a kind of a summary of the beam search. And as I explained, uh, there are a lot of approximation uh, the, to avoid uh, the uh, all possible uh, sequence. And the beam search is uh, the one uh, heuristics. Endpoint detection is another heuristics. And the weight during the score fusion is uh, the, the, uh, the also the heuristics. And there are many others if we uh, the, the, uh, the consider more efficient advanced beam search. So that's the, the beam search part. Any questions? Okay. By the way, this one is very simplified version. <laughs> Very simplified version. Maybe I can also uh, explain a little bit. Uh, I mentioned that you know we can, for example, put the language model score here. But uh, if, for example, this other uh, part, uh, speech recognition part, is based on the character, and this part is word, then again the uh, the uh, the length becomes different. <laughs> And then we have to adjust it. And it's actually this kind of problem happens everywhere uh, the, in the, uh, the beam search. So that actually makes the beam search uh, very complicated. So uh, the, my experience, uh, the, the people uh, the studying the uh, beam search, uh, they're doing a research in the beam search, usually very good researcher. It's actually first, they know everything. For example, we have to know that uh, the everything about the uh, the speech recognition part, acoustic modeling part, lexicon part, and so on. And then uh, we also have to know about uh, the uh, the engram part or uh, the, the neural network language modeling part. And then we have to kind of adjust the links. That also requires a, a deep knowledge about the, uh, the speech recognition and language modeling and so on. And another part is that a lot of heuristics. So it is not ideal because pe uh, the people, I, as far as I know, again, that the, the people that are very, uh, the, uh, the working on the, the beam search, again, that the, all of them I met are very great researchers. But some of them are just simply great researchers, know everything about it, and then, you know, uh, this kind of algorithm perfectly understand and having a very kind of efficient algorithm they came up with. Uh, the other type is that uh, since there are a lot of heuristic, there are a lot of, how to say, things have to consider, and we have to, for example, uh, the consider the balance between the acoustic model or language model or lexicon or even the, the, uh, the 
uh, the comp uh, overall uh, the computation memory and so on. A lot of things we have to consider. So this kind of uh, the, the another type of the great people working on the beam search is actually become a very good manager. <laughs> in the management, it's actually a lot of thinking about a lot of actually consideration of a lot of you know people's kind of health, people's the performance, people's salary, and we all always we have to consider a lot of kind of other scores and then the shoes and then making a good decision which becomes the, the good speech recognition performance and so on. So given my experience, the, the people working on the beam search is always very good to research our other uh, some manager and so. On. Okay, so um, I think I can quickly go through this part. Um, first, I want to explain about the NBEST sequence. So speech recognition is not actually perfect. And then in these cases, as you see from the beam search, finally, uh, if we finish the beam search, we actually uh, don't have a just one best one. We just have actually uh, the several other uh, hypotheses and then corresponding score. So not only just uh, the, the output, the one best uh, the ASR result, uh, but it actually can providing the list. So uh, this is actually uh, the uh, the one of the uh, the important uh, uh, cases. If uh, we use uh, the entire list instead of the best kind of a hypothesis, uh, why this is important? Uh, this is because uh, the invest, uh, the speech recognition is not always perfect. For example, this is actually the uh, I pick up the some of the ASR result, and in this case. And I getting it in the sorting, uh, getting the end best uh, the high uh, the hypothesis ASR hypothesis, and the uh, top one is better. So in these cases, uh, the successful in terms of uh, the the top one is actually uh, the corresponding to the reference grant rule stakes. These are kind of successful cases, but uh, most of the cases it's actually not. As you see that the top hypothesis is different, right? Which one is the correct one among them? Yes, third one. Yes, third one is the correct one. So unfortunately, uh, they make some mistakes. But if we kind of uh, are providing the NBS, it actually has a uh, the, the, uh, the correct result. So this kind of uh, information uh, can be used for many uh, the post processing, like instead of providing the best hypothesis. Uh, to the kind of a machine translation, we can providing the best uh, the several kind of a hypothesis, and then throw it to the, the the machine translation, and then in the machine translation to do the kind of best uh, the, the the score we can get, and then providing it and so on. With that, it might kind of mitigate the issue uh, error issue that uh, potentially happen in the ASR and so on. There are a lot of other application. But anyway, uh, the, the, the A star is not perfect. Uh, in this case, uh, we often using this kind of uh, uh, the uh, NBEST representation. However, NBEST is not very efficient way because, for example, these are uh, the three sentences, almost same, right? Just this part is uh, the wrong. And I go to this which part. Uh, yeah, this part. <laughs> Only this part and this part is wrong. Uh, but you know, uh, the, uh, the, the using this kind of uh, the, the representation is not efficient. So uh, people are actually using the representation uh, called lattice. Uh, this is uh, the also similar to the, the uh, trellis and so on. But anyway, by using this lattice representation, we can actually compactly uh, the represent uh, many of the hypotheses. So uh, some system is uh, the, the only supporting the NBEST, but the other systems also supporting the lattice, which can provide a rich uh, the information uh, than the NBEST and so on. And unfortunately, ESPNet only supports the NBEST, by the way. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, so I think uh, that's it for the uh, lattice part. Uh, and I skip the system combination and the, uh, we'll uh, move to the uh, explanation about the coding assignment.